spot that we're sitting in right now is not not a very desirable spot the way I'm in the back of the trucks in and all that but it is what it is all right I'm gonna talk a little bit about today's video which today is uh, Tuesday the video that y'all saw on Tuesday y'all will be seeing this video on Wednesday the video y'all saw on Tuesday started out with us servicing machines and then it got into taking that hydraulic cylinder apart on Derek's uh, out. Tiger Cat 830. Alright, so here's a lowdown on that. Of course, we, we got him back going uh, today. Uh, put, the, put the cylinder back, back together today and got it back going. You cannot break those nuts on those cylinders. I guess you, you could, you can, but not without a lot of rigging. Very dangerous situations using you know machines to break those nuts and stuff like that because those nuts on those excavator style cylinders are torqued to ungodly specs uh, excavator cylinders and backhoes John Deere backhoes are the same way but Lee has a uh, at Lee's house he has a special cylinder table he bought a table costs like eighteen thousand dollars and you stick the cylinder up in it and it pins it and then it hydraulically breaks that nut a loose where you can get the nut off the off the piston all right then it will also re retorque the nut back down for you when you when you pack the cylinder back that's what lee did he took it he took the rod home with him uh, last night and packed it and then we got it back this morning stuck the cylinder back together we didn't lose any we really didn't lose any run time today at all because Derek was Derek is a good bit ahead of the skitters right now so we didn't lose any any run time as far as that went uh, other than just him being down me and Kevin were still running loading trucks and all that mess like that but the video also showed a lot of other things in it too. Uh, well, it also showed Lee's service truck. Lee, Lee is a ex stribbling mechanic, just like Jay is, and Lee has been on his own for a long time now. Lee is a Lee and Jay both are probably the two best mechanics in our area, hands down. They are good. Uh, Kirk mentioned to me, he said, you ought to sit down with Jay one day and just talk to him. He said, the stuff that Jay knows, he said, you can't read that stuff in a book. And he's right. I mean, he is right. That It would be cool, because I've talked I've talked to Jay at length. I've known Jay for a long time, for a lot of years now. And uh, it would be cool to sit down and just talk to Jay one day, just catch him in his house or something out there in his shop just sit down with him and just talk to him for a while and he would do it jay jay's cool like that and everything but also in that video it showed um the the road how dusty it is and stuff like that i just got asked by somebody if that was our motor grader yes that's our motor grader every piece of equipment that you see that i show in any of my videos belongs to us it's ours we own it all we own that grader that 772 ch that's ours we bought it in uh 2000 we've had it ever since 2009 we bought it uh from over in georgia over there but when i shoot videos i get i'm getting right around 2000 comments per month from just youtube and in doing that, I get a lot of great comments. I get a lot of suggestions and everything. Suggestions are cool. Every now and then I get something really good suggested to me. But here's the thing on suggestions. You have to kind of think a little bit, and I'm not, I'm not, this is just a for instance. Like I had a suggestion said, why don't you have a water truck to water the road down with and everything. That's a great suggestion. The problem with that is, is rarely do we have times like this when it's this dry like this here where it just turns to complete powder like it is and we're dealing with the dust that we're dealing with uh, number two everything has a price a cost on it we only get paid 
listen, we only get paid to put wood on the trucks and deliver it at the mill. That's the only way we get paid. We don't get paid for running a bulldozer. We don't get paid for running a motor grader. We don't get paid for a water truck. So if you were going to buy, you would have to buy a water truck. All right, you'd probably spend, I don't know, you could probably find a junk one for ten or fifteen thousand dollars maybe, you know. Let's just say for for craps and giggles that it costs thirty thousand dollars. Alright, you got thirty thousand dollars tied up into a water truck that you may not use but maybe a month out of the year. Alright. Then you gotta put some insurance on it in case somebody steals it or catches on fire or burns or something like that, the tree falls on it. So then you got some insurance on it. Then you gotta put some diesel fuel in it to run it. Oh, and then here's the big thing. You've got to have a man that can jump in it and can run it. We run with five men. My wife's texting me right now. Heck, what the heck she wants here, let's see. We run with five men out here in the woods, and uh, yeah, it's just saying I hope my hope my day is going better than it was yesterday. Yesterday sucked. I'm gonna tell y'all I, I didn't leave here until seven o'clock last night. But uh, you got to have. We've only got five men out here working in the woods. That's it, and well, none of us have time to jump down, get on a water truck, go find a creek somewhere and pump water out of the creek in the water truck and then come back in and wet the road down and do all that. It's just not feasible. Anything, like I said, anything you do like that has a cost to it. And so you have to figure in, are you gonna, are you gonna get paid for that or not? In our case, no, we're not. And so we just eat dust and blow filters out and change air filters until we finally get some rain, you know. And we will, I mean, it's November the 1st, 90 freaking degrees again today. And I had somebody say in a comment the other day, said, y'all, your loader stays right with your processor. That's right, we do. They said, that we don't do that. We stay six days behind our processor. Well, here, we never know week to week or day to day what a meal is or is not going to be doing. We make so many separations on this wood. We have a lot of different, a lot of different separations. I have a video about that, about the separations. A lot of different separations. And in this 90 degree heat and hotter, <laughs> these trees will not last six days in a pile. They will ruin it. So, I mean, they have to, where we're at, you just can't, you know, you just can't let that wood lay like that for that amount of time like that. Because, I mean, I mean, this pine right here will dry out so fast, and then if it, if it blues on you, if it turns blue on you, you can't, you can't, the only thing you can do with the wood is take it for put, for put wood, like what I'm loading right here. This is just tops and, and dead pieces and stuff like that. And then I had a guy today in a comment said, why don't you get a small chipper and chip and cover your cover your decks with wood chips and use them on your road? Well, there again, that's a cost. It's a cost, you gotta buy the machine. There's no telling what a small chipper costs. You gotta buy that thing. And you gotta put fuel in it. Then you gotta feed trees in it, and then you're gonna have wear and tear on knives. You gotta keep knives up. I hope to God that we never, ever, ever see a chipper ever on our job. I hope that we never own a chipper as long as we're living. I know a lot about chippers. Uh, there's been several people here in our area who have had them, and then they put them right out of business within a year of them buying them. And I know what it takes to maintain them things. I know what it costs. The cost is incredible to run one of those fool things, man. Day to day, just hour by hour, what it costs to run one of those things is ridiculous. And then 
you gotta have trailers hauling in. You gotta have those things, you know, those chip trailers and stuff to blow, blow the chips in and all. And I hope, I hope that never comes here. I'd rather just keep hauling that brush right back out there in the woods rather than to have a, you know, doing the maintenance and blowing that thing out and all that stuff like that. So everything, everything comes with a cost. And I think a lot of times when people suggest things or whatever, that they don't, that they're not thinking about the, the big picture and because we're not going to buy anything or do anything unless it can make us money. And see right now in logging, there's not much money to be made and, uh, and all that. So you have to be really careful because you can make one wrong move, man, equipment rot wise. And within a year, you're out of business. You know, I mean, it just, I mean, it's, it's, it's that critical, you know, right now. So it's gotta, you gotta kind of keep all that stuff in mind. Of course, it's, it's very understandable to be able to watch, to watch something like what we do and say, well, why don't you do it like this? Or why don't you do it like that? Or think, you know, that, that you know, this way, or, you know, you do this or whatever. Know, so I got a glue here. Let's see. Come on, Frank. What you got? What you got there, Frank? Maybe about eighteen hundred. Yeah, about eighteen hundred. So anyhow, I hope that uh, helps. This video right here maybe helps some people understand, you know, a little bit more in depth on uh, on some of that stuff like that to where because a lot a lot of it don't make sense what we do, the reason why we do some of the things that we do, and uh, uh, you just have to kind of understand it from a uh, you know from a logging standpoint, from a business standpoint. You know, I mean, this is a uh, this is a business and. And then kind of another aspect too is, we'll watch this truck pull out here. Another aspect too is, is we will TDK, which is us, is TDK is Tim, Kevin, and Derek, we're brothers, and then my dad too. My dad of course owns it and everything. Uh, we will never be any bigger than we are right now. That's, this is all we'll ever be, is size-wise, what we're doing right now. And the reason why is, is because we will never have somebody else run these three machines that me, Kevin, and Derek run. The track loader, the processor, nor the track cutter. That there'll never be anybody else other than us three run those machines. Uh, it's very frustrating on our end that we'll never do that because it takes the right type people to run these machines to run them. So I got 13,400 hours on it on this machine and there's there's literally there's no dents in it. It's not banged up. Still runs load 20 loads a day and stuff like that. I take care of the machine. I look at it every day. I grease it all that stuff like that now you have a guy that treats a machine like a, a honda cord and, and never does anything to it other than just getting in it and and run it uh you can't do that on these machines you've got to you've got to stay on top of them you got to spend the time and so that's the reason why we'll never have anybody run these machines it may come to a point one day where when we're ready to quit we'll just quit you know and everything uh, because these machines here cost so much money like the processor now you're going to spend up close to seven hundred thousand dollars to buy one of those machines uh the 635 you're going to spend over half a million dollars on one of them to buy one of those the track cutter now is uh six hundred thousand dollars for if you bought a new lx uh eight seven eight eight thirty nearly six hundred thousand dollars 
and you can't put just any run-of-the-mill operator on the machines and, uh, and everything and, and see the other part of that is is me and Kevin and Derek take care of all these other machines day to day too uh, we're constantly looking at them checking on them and stuff like that we see things that the operators a lot of times that the other two operators that we have may not see we'll see them before they see it and uh and that's just the way it is because I mean, they're not writing uh, you know their their name is not on the line writing a check to pay for them every month you know so um it is aggravating um like we can't I, i'll take off a day every day and then we take off one week during the summer and that's pretty much it unless we get a rain out day if you get a rain out day you're off but you can't you can't plan for a rain out day you know what i mean and so you know it's like the few weeks ago on my video where i went to homecoming you know you never had you don't really you just had to do it you know and all but i hope that helps maybe understand some things because uh, i know i got a lot of new subscribers a lot of people that, that watch my stuff a lot of people watch my stuff that are not subscribers a lot of people because of youtube youtube really promotes my videos uh, on a lot of different searches and i can tell that by the views that some of them are getting and everything like that and the algorithms and the stuff but uh, so just kind of it ain't this ain't nothing that i had went over before so y'all be good you can see all the dust right there man eating them air filters up boy eating them air filters up y'all be good we'll catch y'all later later taters